Hi, session number eight. I can't believe it's number eight. Anyway, let's get uh, into the warm up. Starting off with the posture check back of the head, shoulder blades, buttocks, and heels up against the imaginary wall. Open the chest, slide fingertips down the seam of the trouser leg. Tilt the pelvis slightly so you've got that zip up and hollow, pulling up and pulling in. Knees rolling out a little bit, arch of the foot lifting, and then spreading out the toes. And you've got the weight even between the little toe, the big toe, and the heels. Breathing, of course, full and wide into the rib cage, then you don't interfere with your zip up and hollow. Then just starting to warm up the joints, resting the fingertips on the shoulders, and just draw some big shoulder circles. Circling those elbows around. Forward, up and round and back and down. Maybe one circle on an in-breath, one circle on an out-breath. Still keeping the torso as stable as you can and switch on those core muscles. And from here, keep the shoulders back and down. Bring the arms down by your side. Keep the chest open, taking a breath in. And as you breathe out, float the arms up to shoulder height and breathing in to float down. Lifting the arms up, reaching forward, but keeping the shoulders down. Try to keep the weight even between the balls of the feet and the heels, so you're not rocking forward or back. Lengthening through the arms and holding the arms about shoulder height. Then peeling the arms away, take one arm up, the other arm down. Open the chest, bringing the palms of the hands together, taking it the other way. Squeeze back, pull those shoulder blades back. Then turning the head, looking up. At the upper arm and bring it back to center. Exhale to open and inhale to close while keeping the headlamps on the hip bones pointing forward, headlamps on the chest pointing forward, nothing else moving. One more time either side, squeezing those shoulder blades together, work the posture muscle across the upper back and then bring it back to center, bend the knees, take the hips back and down, reaching forward. Make sure the knees don't go any further forward than the toes. Take all the weight into the heels, keeping the chest up. Nice and smooth. Breathing in to go down, breathing out to push up. Holding on to the peach underneath the chin and the orange between the knees. So the shoulders, the hips and knees and the ankles stay aligned. Then adding on to that, lifting up if you can onto the balls of the feet, catch it at the top and then take it down, adding in the calf muscles into this. Exhaling up, inhale down, right back up onto the balls of the feet, spreading out the toes to spread the load. Warming up hips, knees, thighs, buttocks, ankles, and of course shoulders. Then next time hold it at the top, balance, and circle the arms as you bring the heels down and squat. Lifting all the way up, sweeping round, opening the chest again, reaching and take the weight into the heels. Don't forget the peach and the orange. Warming up the shoulders still, the hips, the knees, thighs, buttocks, adding in those calf muscles. And on the next one, Hold it up at the top, keeping the shoulders down. Hold and balance if you can. And sweeping the arms round, bringing the heels down. Taking the legs up nice and wide, turn out the knees, turn out the toes. Keeping the chest open and lifted. Do a little lunge side to side. Make sure the knees don't go any further out than the toes. And adding some arms into that as you go over just to reach the arm by the ear and the other one across in front of the body again try not to twist just lift the rib cage and stretch again getting more flexibility into the shoulders hips knees and ankles altering the weight from side to side and from there. Just bring it back to the start position and walking the feet back in. Checking the position, back of the head, shoulder blades, buttocks and heels up against that imaginary wall again. Standing on the back of your mat, 
gently rolling down, drop the chin down over the peach, give it a bit of a squeeze, relax the knees, slowly roll down, just let your breathing flow, drop, drop, drop the head, hold that there, and then just bend one knee, straighten then the other knee, just bend and straighten, moving through the hips and the knees, keep the head down, arms close into the legs, and then just slowly come up, link by link, bone by bone, right back up against that imaginary wall, shoulders back and down. And again, drop the head, slowly, slowly down. And then hold, and then circle the arms. Just drop the head, let the arms dangle. Get a good stretch. Keep trying to keep the weight even between the balls of the feet and the heels. Change direction, make the circles go the other way. And then just gently, slowly come up again, link by link, bone by bone, up against that imaginary wall. And then this time, using that roll down to go on to the hands. Just drop, 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 and then when you can't go any further, bend the knees a little bit more, walk out until the heels come off the floor. Drop the head and then press one heel down, push up and press the other heel down. So you're doing the downward dog, press down, get a good stretch through those calves. Now, if that is not comfortable for your wrists or anything else, of course, you can stay standing and then just stretch the calf muscles standing up. Press that back heel into the floor and the front knee just stays over the ankle. And then, of course, you would do the other leg. Otherwise, you're doing the downward dog Still pressing down, get a good stretch through those calves, and then hold, relax the knees a little bit more, and then walk the hands all the way in. And then keeping the arms close in, slowly come up, link by link, bone by bone again, up against that imaginary wall. And then this time, drop the chin. Again, peel yourself off the wall like a piece of wet wallpaper. Bend the knees when you can't go any further, then put one hand down and then walk out, if you can, into the full plank. Nice straight line from the head to the heels. Make sure your bottom doesn't stick up, keep your peach underneath your chin. If that's no good, of course, you just go onto the hands and knees. Or you could go down onto your front. And from here, see if you can, bend the knees a little bit walk the hands in to the toes, keep the head down and slowly come up again, link by link, bone by bone. And then just drop the chin again, slowly, slowly down. And then bending the knees, put one hand out, then the other hand further, then the other hand, and then the last hand underneath the shoulders. So you've got like four steps out with your hands. If that's not comfortable again, go onto your front or onto your hands and knees. Now here's the challenge. Slide one hand out, elbow down. Other hand out, elbow down. Hold that there. Make sure your bottom isn't sticking up. And then gently pop the knees. And then just taking the head down onto the backs of the hands, but keep the hands slightly apart so they're not overlapping. Maybe just bring the middle fingers together. Let the forehead rest down on the backs of the hands. Lengthen through the legs, tummy button pulled up and in. And sliding the shoulder blades down your back. Peach underneath the chin, plank of wood on the back of the head. Keeping the legs long. And then you just exhale to lift. Keep your eyes focused on the backs of the hands so there's no engagement through the neck. And breathe in and go down. Keeping the eyes focused on the backs of the hands. Slide those shoulder blades down. Exhaling up, inhaling down. Doing the future peach underneath your chin. Ears pointing forward. And the plank of wood on the back of your head. Working into your back. Try not to push with the arms. Try and just stabilise with the arms. If you would like to work a little bit harder, then you would lift 
the upper body, lift the right hand, glue it just onto the side of the forehead, and then gently go down. Exhale to lift, inhale, hold. Exhale, lift the left hand up. And inhale, take it all down. So it's just a lift, and then the back of the hand, and then down. Engaging your back that little bit more. Just try to stabilize with the arm rather than push. And lift and down. Just holding that there, and then maybe both arms together. Lift as you exhale, inhale, hold. Exhale, both hands come up, glue them on, and inhale down. But of course, if that's too much, you can stay with the alternate arms. Try to keep everything below the waist still. Keep that tummy button pulled up and in, and the buttocks relaxed. If you find your buttocks are starting to work, take the legs out into a wider V-shape, turn the big toes in towards one another to relax the buttocks, isolating the back. And then if you would like to add a little bit of waist whittling onto this, exhale to lift, inhale, hold, exhale, arms come up, inhale, hold, exhale, bend to your right side. Keep the neck in line with the spine. Breathing in, bring it down, back and gently go down. So if we lift the upper body first, lift the hands and hold, bend to your left side. Gently back and down. Try not to engage the neck. Keep the neck in line with your peach underneath your chin, the plank of wood on the back of your head. So there's no strain on the neck at all. If that's too much, you can lift the upper body Lift the right hand, leave the left arm down, and bend to your right side. Gently bring it back and down. You've got a little bit of push with that left arm. Then you would go to the other side. Lift and hold. Glue the left hand on. Leave the right arm where it is. Give a little bit of stabilizing, uh, stabilization with that arm and gently down. But if you can, it's both together adding that waist whittling onto that. Bend elbow to rib. Then maybe you could hold up and do straight to the other side. But of course, if that's too much, you can stay with any of the early options. You can go down in between. And then when you've done enough repetitions, whichever level you prefer to do, come up onto the hands and knees. Arch the back, drop the head, pull the tummy button up and in, and stretch. Give it a good stretch. Remember, you can always come up onto your knuckles if you're not comfortable on the palms. Dropping the head, push the hips towards the head. Keep that tummy button pulled up and in, pressing down through the hands. And coming back onto your front, with the forehead back down onto the backs of the hands. Remember, you can always turn your head to the side and let your cheek rest. Lengthen through the legs, tummy button pulled up and in. Then turning the heels in together and the toes out. So you're opening up your hips and keep your cup of tea on the back of your pelvis. Keep the shoulders down, shoulder blades down, flat against your back, neck relaxed. And then engaging the butter, just hover that right leg off the floor and then take it out to the side and circle it around. Maybe one circle on an in breath one circle on an out breath. Nice and smooth. And when you've done approximately five in one direction, take it the other way. So it's lift and then out to the side. Nice and smooth. Keep the hips glued down. Make sure both hips stay on the floor. And then you know how bad I am at counting. So maybe one more on that side and then bring it back. And then, of course, you swap to the other side. Hover the leg, take it out to the side, and then lift. Maybe one circle in breath, one circle out breath. Keep lengthening through the legs. Try to keep the torso as stable as you can while you do this. Really feel the buttock engage. Then, when you've done your five again, then you swap to the other side, uh, to the other direction. Lift and out and down and in. In and out of thighs working. 
as well as buttock. Nice and smooth, flexibility into that hip. And if you think I've done about five there, then just relax back down, lengthen through the legs, and then come up onto the hands and knees. Just sit back onto the heels, let the forehead rest down if that's comfortable. You can always take the arms behind you, palms up. You can open the knees, get the hips back further. Breathe full and wide into the ribs, get a good stretch in the lower back and the buttocks. Remember, if that's not comfortable, you can sit on your bottom, swing your legs round in front of you, hug the knees in, drop the head over the knees, and have a good stretch in that position instead. And then, if you just want to scoot back out onto your front, you can add a little bit of a lower back in now, so both legs together, if you can. Lengthening through the legs, tummy button pulled up and they get in again. Heels turned in, toes turned out, so your inner thighs are going to engage. And then just hover the legs off the floor and then circle them in opposite directions. Now again, if that's too much, do the one we did before. Just do one leg at a time. Five circles in each direction again, or more if you choose to do more. Nice and smooth. But remember, you can always just do one leg, feeling the lower back engage as well this time with both legs off the floor. Then when you've completed the five, bring it back and see if you can lengthen through those legs again. Tummy button pulled up and in. Keep the heels turned in, toes turned out and then hover the legs, clapping the heels together. Five little taps on the in breath, five little taps on the out breath and down. If you find that's too much, puts too much pressure on your back, lift one leg, take it out to the side, bring it back, put it down, keeping, of course, your pelvis stable, lift the other leg, out to the side, bring it back, put it down. You can always stay with that if you need to. Or you can still hold the legs up, do the tapping, five little taps on the in-breath, five little taps on the out-breath, you could just hold the legs up if you want to. You can decide which level. Then when you've done enough repetitions, relax back down, and then again come up onto the hands and knees. Sit back onto the heels, let the forehead rest down, arms in front, arms behind, knees open. Or you can sit and hug the knees into the chest. If you're sinking back onto the heels, make sure you don't lift your hips up in order to get the head down. If there's a gap, put one hand underneath your head and let the forehead rest. If there's still a gap, you could put the other fist on top of it. But sinking right back, make sure your hips don't lift, otherwise you lose that stretch in the lower back and the buttocks that you've just worked really hard. And coming up onto the hands and knees again, scooting all the way out onto your front and roll over onto your right side. Get the head down, lengthening the legs. Taking a moment to set this up, bending the knees forward so the hips, the knees and the ankles are stacked. Keeping the head down and the neck relaxed. Think about having that belt around the middle and attached to the belt is a rope. The rope goes over a beam and over the beam there is the elephant with his trunk wrapped around the rope. Now he's already got a bit of tension on there, so lifting that waist up slightly off the floor already. And then take a breath in and as you breathe out, reaching the arm up towards the ceiling. And breathe in to release down. Gently reaching all the way up and down. So you're shouting, pull at that elephant and the waist lifts. And feel that tension in the undercarriage. Now, if you want to stay with that, you can stay with that. Otherwise, you could come up onto that right elbow, but make sure the elbow is directly underneath the shoulder. You might want to bend the mat over a time or two to get a bit more padding under there. We could always get a cushion. Keep the peach underneath the chin, between the chin and the chest, and sharp pull at the elephant and the waist lifts. Keeping the neck in line and breathing in to release. Try not to lift the head. Just reaching up as you exhale and inhale. 
to release. Keeping those knees glued together will help those inner thighs work a little bit as well. And then if you can, place the back of the hand onto the forehead and then lift the waist as you exhale. Inhale, rotate, elbow to fingertips and then bring it back on the in-breath and release it down. So you're lifting first, then you rotate elbow to fingertips and then elbow to ceiling and release the waist down. If that's too much on the elbow at any point or the shoulder, you can stay on your side. It doesn't really work with the twist with that, but you could still do the lifting part. If, however, you would like to work a little bit harder, keep making sure that elbow stays directly underneath the shoulder. Exhale to lift the hips up as well. Elephant's got to pull harder. And twist, elbow to fingertips. Lift again, opening the chest and gently lower down. You would do exhale, lift those hips as high as you can and twist, elbow to ceiling, keeping those hips up and then gently down. Every now and again, check that elbow hasn't slid out. You decide how many repetitions of these you would like to do. You should really feel that in your middle, getting flexibility into your spine, and a big twist, reaching up and gently down. Maybe two more. Or you do more if you feel that you can. Reaching up with the elbow and gently down. Try and keep the neck in line, don't forget the peach. Push those hips up high, keep the knees glued together and then gently, gently down. And then just relax back down, let the head rest and roll over onto your a moment to set that up. Session 8, video number 5. Bring the chin down over the right peach, stretching fingertips towards your toes. Trade marbles balanced across the pelvis, bracing the tummy, pulling up and pulling in, scooping out the tummy but keeping that little grape in the small of your back. And extending your left leg along the floor, lift the right knee up into tabletop position. Keep the neck and the shoulders relaxed, reaching for the toes. And starting to draw some circles, either with the knee or the straight leg in the air, while keeping the hips glued down. So just start off with a small circle and then gradually increase the size. Maybe one circle on an in-breath, one circle on an out-breath, but keeping both the hips glued right down. Try not to move the torso. Everything else staying stable apart from that leg in the air. But you can do the bent leg if the hamstrings are quite tight. Then when you've done approximately five, you swap and make the leg go the other way. But try not to allow those marbles to wobble about on the tray. Big a circle as you can while keeping the pelvis absolutely stable. Change it to the bent leg if you need to. And then, not sure how many that is, but maybe we'll do one more. Bring it back to the start position and replace the foot. Keeping that pelvis stable, slide the foot in and then extend the right leg out and lift that left leg up. You can always rest your hands on your pelvis to check that it's not rocking and then you would go with the circling. Bent leg, slightly easier than the straight leg. But you can decide which level you go for. But you're still trying to keep that torso as stable as you can. Nice and slow, keep lengthening through that right leg. And then when you've done the approximate five, then you make it go the other way circling the leg around. Nice big circle. And keep the pelvis absolutely still. 
shoulder blades melting into the floor. And then again, not quite sure how many, should feel that inner thigh working. Bring it back to start position, probably about five. And then replace the foot, slide the other one in, and then hug the knees into the chest. Maybe have a little rock side to side. Release that lower back, hugging the knees right in. And then putting one foot down, the other foot down. Keeping the arms down by your side and then take the arms out to crucifix position with the palms turned down. Shoulder blades melting into the floor. And then again, extending that left leg out. Lift the right knee up and extend the leg. This time, taking the leg over to the left side, lifting that right hip off the floor. Just rolling the lower part of your body over so you can get the foot to touch the floor and then gently bring it back up. Now again, if that's too much, you can of course do that with the bent leg. Those hamstrings are too tight. Exhaling to bring it back maybe, and inhale to take it over, or the other way around, whichever works better. Straight leg or bent leg. Lifting the right hip, but keeping the left hip down, lengthen through that left leg. And just one more, I think, might make it five. And then bring it back to the start position, Replace the foot and change legs. Lifting the leg, keep it bent if you need to, straight if you can, and then lifting that left hip. And you might find one side is better than the other side. I find that the other side, I could get that a little bit further over. But you can just try to get that bigger range of movement with each one, but keeping the shoulder blades glued down, palms turned down, to help to keep you stable. And then again, when you've done about five on that side, replace the foot, slide the other one in, and then hug the knees into the chest, putting the hands on tops of the knees, and then just circle the knees around. Hugging in and release the back. First one way, and then the other way. Big circles. Keep the neck and the shoulders relaxed. Bring it back to the start position, putting one foot down, the other foot down. Taking the arms out to crucifix again. Palms turned down. Extending the left leg, lift the right knee up. And then either with the bent leg or the straight leg. You're going to take the straight leg or the bent leg over again to that left side, lifting the right hip. And then you sweep the leg around, but keep the left hip glued down. Joining the two together, circling. Getting flexibility into the middle as well as the hip. Just as big a circle as you can, but keep those shoulder blades glued right down. Keep lengthening through that left leg to keep the hip down. Just the right hip lifting. And then bring it back to the start position and take it the other way. Try not to lift that left hip, but the right hip goes over as the leg goes over to the left side. As smooth as you can, at any point you can change to the bent leg to make it a little bit easier. Try to keep that torso as stable as you can. And then again, when you've completed approximately the five on each side, replacing that foot to the floor, Slide the other leg in, extend that right leg, left leg up, keeping those shoulders down, then you go to the other side. Bent leg if you want to, but if you can, the straight leg. Getting lots of flexibility into the hip. And the spine, a bit of waist whittling going on there. So you've got your inner thigh working, outer thigh working, Hip flexor, even a little bit of buttock going on. Keep lengthening through that right leg. Then again, when you've done approximately five, you make it go the other way. Circling around. Lifting the hip as the leg comes forward. But keeping that right one glued right down. This is 
big a circle as you can manage. And don't forget to breathe. I have no idea how many have done that, so maybe one more after this. And then bring it back to the start position. Replace the foot. And then again, just hug those knees into the chest. And circle the legs. First one way. And then the other way, releasing your back. Still encouraging the flexibility into the hips. And from there, putting one foot down, the other foot down. Stretch the legs out, take the arms over the top of your head. Give yourself a full body stretch from the tips of your fingers to the tips of your toes. Stretching through those hip flexors that you've worked. And then see if you can, Slide the feet in, bring the arms back down by your side, lift one leg to tabletop, press your back into the mat, lift the other leg up into tabletop. Hold on behind the thighs, bring the knees into the chest, breathing in, nod your head, breathing out, use your legs and just pull yourself up to sitting. And then we need to do the other side, so if you just want to swing round and stretch. And then just bending the knees forward a little bit, keeping the hips, the knees, the ankles stacked. Letting the head rest, the feet underneath the chin. And again, you're gonna think about that elephant. So you've got your belt, the rope, the beam, and the trunk of the elephant around the rope. And then you start off nice and easy, take a breath in, and as you breathe out, just lift the middle off the floor. And breathing in to release it down. Keeping the neck relaxed, reaching up towards the ceiling, and then gently, gently down. Engaging around the middle so that elephant is pulling the waist off the floor. Now, if you want to stay with that, you can stay there. Otherwise, you come up onto your elbow and make sure the elbow is directly underneath the shoulder, keeping the knees glued together, the peach underneath the chin. Take a breath in and as you breathe out, reaching up towards the ceiling and breathing in to release. Stretching all the way up. And of course, if that's too much with the elbow or the shoulder, you can stay on your side. Try and keep the knees together, then the inner thighs work a little bit as well. And then if you want to, you can lift the hips up off the floor. And release. So lifting up and releasing. And then if you want to, you can add the twist onto that. So you can do it from here, lift the waist and bring the elbow to the fingertips and bring the elbow up and release down or you can lift the hips and rotate elbow to fingertips elbow up to the ceiling so you can decide which level you're going for here pushing up think about that elephant pulling you up lifting those hips right up off the floor but of course at any point if that's too much you can lie on your side Lifting up and rotate, working into the waist, load bearing, of course, for the upper body. Try to keep the neck in line with the spine so there's no strain on the neck. Just an exhale up, inhale, hold, exhale, twist, inhale, lift, and gently down. And you can decide again how many of these you would like to do and maybe one more or you can just pause the video and do some more relaxing back down uh, and then from there just stretching out and roll gently over please on to your Taking a moment to set this up, bring the chin down over the beach, stretch the fingertips towards your toes, shoulders, hips, knees and ankles aligned with the orange width between the knees and a little grape in the small of your back. So you're not going to arch your back off your grape or tilt your pelvis and crush your grape. Keep the natural curve 
So already those tummy muscles should be braced a little bit. And then just slide your first two fingers in to just inside the pointy bits of the hip bones. And then put a little bit of pressure inside. So it's just on the points and then slide it a little way and then press down. Then take a breath in and as you breathe out, without tilting the pelvis, just press the tummy button right down into the back bone. And breathing in to release. And immediately when you press that tummy button down into the back bone as you exhale, you should feel the tummy muscle brace, the transversus abdominis muscle, the stabilizer muscle work. You're not moving any bones at all, just the muscle. Feeling the muscle tense underneath the fingertips. So we just exhale and engage the tummy and inhale to release. But when you release it, release it to about 30%. So you've always got a bit of a contraction in the tummy. So just pressing down. When you press down, think about pulling up the pelvic floor at the same time and then just releasing. So pressing down and then release. Pressing in and pulling up so that pelvic floor lifts as well. And if you're not feeling anything on the tummy, even if you've moved your fingers around a little bit, maybe you could, if you try to make this a little bit more challenging, you might feel it a little bit more. Take a breath in and as you breathe out, just hover the right foot a tiny bit off the floor and breathe in and put it down. And then hover the left foot, bracing the tummy, and breathe in and put it down. So it's literally just a hover. Try not to move any bones. Don't lift the foot any higher than about a half an inch off the floor. And you should really feel that tummy engage while you do that. So it's just exhale to hover, and inhale down. Brace, brace, brace the tummy. Now again, if you want to work harder, or maybe you're not, still not feeling it too much, then what you could do is just hover one foot and then the other foot, and then put the first foot down and the second foot down. Then you would start with the other leg. So the exhale up, up, and inhale down, down. But remember, you're not lifting your legs high, just a slight hover off the floor. So if you lift the feet higher, it makes it easier to want to be doing that. So it's just hover, hover, and down, down. And again, if that's too much, of course, your back starts to arch, then you go back to the alternate single leg. Just exhale up, up, inhale down, down, or alternate hoverings. Now, if you would like to work harder with that one, you can extend the leg out and the other leg out. Now immediately your back will try to start to arch off the grape. And if it's doing that, brace the tummy again a little bit more. Keeping the neck relaxed, the shoulders relaxed, shoulder blades melting into the floor. And then you would hover the straight leg. Exhale to lift, inhale to lower. A little bit more challenging than the single bent leg. Exhale up, inhale down. But that torso remains absolutely stable while you do this, lengthening through the legs. If you find your back starts to arch, of course, you can slide the feet back in again with the knees up, feet flat on the floor. However, if you are managing that one okay, then it would be exhale one leg, then the other leg, then put the first one down and the second one down. And you would start with the other leg. Now, this is a whole different ball game. Exhale up, up, inhale, down, down. So briefly, both the legs are in the air together. But that torso, that pelvis does not move. Again, if that's too much, you can go with the back with the straight leg alternates. Or you can do the bent legs. Hardest version is lift, lift, lower, lower of the straight leg. The next level up would be the bent leg. Lift, lift, lower, lower. And then the next level up would be the straight leg. Still making sure that back stays on the grape. And lift, lower, lift, lower. And the easier version is, of course, the bent leg. Lift, lower, lift, lower. 
So you can decide which level you want to do, making sure if you're doing the alternate legs that you do equal numbers on both legs. And then we've had enough of that. The back is starting to arch. That's the time to stop. Then just slide the feet in, bring the knees up and hug into the chest. Then put the hands on tops of the knees and push them around in a circle. Hug them right into the chest. Pulling in, circling, circling the legs. And then change direction, make it go the other way just to release that lower back. from here, putting one foot down, the other foot down. Bringing the soles of the feet together and let the knees just flop apart. Stretch those inner thighs, let the weight of your legs do the work. Sliding the heels a little bit closer in towards your body. Get a good stretch in those inner thighs. Relax and stretch. And then from there, if you just bring the knees up, feet flat on the floor, and then put one foot onto the, or your right foot onto the right side of your mat, left foot onto the left side of the mat. So keeping the legs wide, taking the arms out of the side crucifix position, and then roll the knees over to your right side and hold that there. Stretch down the side of your body, through the outside of the hip and thigh, round your middle, and then if you want to, you can put that right foot on top of the left thigh and ease the leg over that little bit more. Maybe turn the head and look along your left arm and get some stretch through the neck as well as round the middle. Hold that there. And then replace that foot to the floor. And then keeping the feet wide, the knees wide, take the legs over to the other side. You can leave that there if you get a good enough stretch. Keep the shoulder blades glued down. And if you want to, you put the left foot on top of the right thigh. Turning the head, look along the right arm. Hold that there. Really, really good stretch. And then from there, just replace the foot to the floor. And then stretch the legs out. Take the arms over the top of your head. And give yourself a full body stretch from the tips of your fingers to the tips of your toes. Lengthen and stretch, stretching through breathing with the rib cage. And taking hold of your right wrist with your left hand, cross your left ankle over the right ankle. Look, start again. Right ankle over the left ankle. And give a little tug on that wrist and bend to your left side. Keep the head down and just bend as far over as you can go. Get a good stretch down the side of your body. If it's not comfortable, you can bring the arms down by your side and then just bend to your left side. Slide the left hand down the seam of the trouser leg. And then bring it back to centre and change to the other side. This time, left ankle over the right. Arms over the head if that's comfortable. And then take hold of your left wrist and bend to your right side. If it's not comfortable, just take the arms down by your side. A little tug on the wrist will help to lift the rib cage away from the pelvis. Lengthening down the side of your body, taking the pelvis away from the ribs. Stretching down the side. And we've had a good stretch there. Relax. Bring the arms back down by your side and then gently please roll over onto your front. Taking the forehead down onto the back of one hand, reach behind with the other hand for the foot on the same side. Bring the heel into the bottom, the knees together, press the hip into the floor. Get a good stretch in the hip flexor and the front of the thigh. Remember, you can always get hold of the sock or the trouser leg. You can always use the other ankle just to push the leg in if you can't do either of those things. And you can. Lift the head and the shoulders if you want to. Keep the eyes focused on the back of the hand. Then we've got a good stretch there. Change to the other leg. Bring the heel right into the bottom, the knees together. 
pressing the hip into the floor and get a good stretch through the front of the hip. Lifting the head and shoulders if you want to, but remember not to engage the neck. Ears pointing forward, peach down, sorry, chin down over the peach, keeping the knees together. And then just release, coming up onto the hands and knees. Arch the back, drop the head, pull the tummy button up on it, and stretch in the back of your neck all the way down to your tail. Tuck that pelvis under. Get a really good stretch through your spine. Remember, you can always come up onto your knuckles if you want to. Try and drop the head down, push the hips towards the head, and look back between the thighs. And coming into a sitting position. Just swing the legs round in front of you. Sitting up nice and tall, lengthen through the legs, pop the hands down by the thighs, and then reach down towards your heels. Remember, it doesn't matter how far forward you go, but keep the legs nice and straight. Then you've got a good stretch through the hamstring. Behind the knees up into the thighs, the lower back and the buttocks. Maybe take a breath in. And as you breathe out, walk the fingers a little bit further out. Keep the neck and the shoulders relaxed, just going as far as you can, get a really good stretch through the legs. Pressing the backs of the knees into the floor. And then relax, sitting up nice and tall, either with legs straight or bent or crossed. But lengthening up, remember you can always get a cushion um, and sit on your cushion just to lift you up a little bit if it's not comfortable there. And then putting right hand palm down underneath the buttock, sit upon it and drop the left ear down into the shoulder. Stretch neck, stretch shoulder, hold that there. Keep lengthening through the spine so the tummy's pulled up and in. Using the weight of the head to stretch the neck and the shoulder. And then release that, shoulders back and down. Drop the head, slide the shoulders down away from the ears. Keep the tummy button pulled up and in. So the back is nice and straight. And use the weight of the head to stretch the back of the neck. Slide those shoulder blades down your back. And then lengthen up again. Left hand, palm down underneath the buttock, sit upon that one and drop your right ear into the shoulder. Hold up there, keep the shoulders down, neck and shoulder stretch. And then releasing that again, lengthening up, think about that piece of string through the centre of your head, pulling you up towards the ceiling. And then shoulders back and down, keep the peach underneath the chin, between the chin and the chest, and turn the head and look as far as you can over that right shoulder. Try not to tilt the top of the head back. Shoulders still back and down, back nice and straight. Turn the head and look over your left shoulder, keeping that chin down. And then relax, drop the chin back down into the chest, lifting the head up, and then just release the shoulders forward, up and round and back and down. Get a really, really good stretch through those shoulders. Get them moving. Release, release those shoulders. And there we are, end of session number eight. I can't believe it's eight weeks. Well, it's ten weeks now, isn't it? Since lockdown. Well, I hope you're all still keeping fit and enjoying the sunshine. All I can say is thank goodness for the sunshine. At least we can get out um, and walk or run or cycle or golf now. And uh, looking forward to seeing you again next week. Bye for now.